In this video, we're gonna be trying seafood at three different price amounts of money. I'm talking very affordable seafood, very medium price seafood, and the most expensive seafood we could find in Santiago. I'm talking about the rare, the epic, the amazing Chilean king crab. But first, let's back up. So far in Chile, we have experienced a lot of the food this country has to offer. And my god, they have a lot, including and especially mayonnaise. People here, they love their mayonnaise. Today, it's all about seafood. Chile has a gigantic coast, it's full of delicious seafood. Whether it's giant squid, Chilean sea bass, or amazing king crabs, today we're gonna have three different meals and three completely different experiences. You ready? Let's go. We've come to our first location right behind me, El Galeon. You might remember or recognize this place from our last video because this is where they cooked up some very bizarre... I shudder at the memory. A weird rock with like a claw in it and it's, my hand smelled like fecal matter. It was a bad memory. Now, the chef, he did a great job with what he had. But today we've come back to try something else. This place is wide ranging. They have everything from very expensive giant king crab to very humble, delicious and affordable empanadas. Right now I'm in the kitchen with Antonio and he's about to make five of these empanadas. Let's do it. Step one, take the ajo, also known as garlic. That goes on top of the shrimp. Then the oregano, a little bit of salt. This is cumin. That also goes on the shrimp. Give it a little bit of a mix. This right here is our filling and it's already looking amazing. Right here we have our wheat wrapper. He takes a big dollop of shrimp and puts that right inside. After the shrimp, he puts on a load of Parmesan cheese. Antonio takes a little bit of agua, Spanish, for water. He hits it on the edge. He folds it over, lets each end kiss and then he pushes all the air out. The final touch, a crimping wheel to give the empanada its signature look. Right here, the empanadas are ready to be put in the fryer. One by one, he drops them in. So these are gonna stay in here frying in that oil for two to three minutes. How does the empanada fit into the daily lifestyle of people here in Santiago? The empanada is quite known in Chile and it's a very traditional dish, but many people order like an appetizer. It's not like a full dish when you come here. It's more like something to start with. All right, folks, we have our first meal of the day right here. These look gorgeous. Now, a normal person would probably eat it from here, but what I want to do is just break it open from that middle part. Oh my gosh, that was not a mistake. Look at that oozy Parmesan cheese and just a fat piece of camarones sitting right there. Let's try it out. Oh no, yeah. you look how juicy it is, it's dripping. Inside is stuffed with big bouncy shrimp. There's a ton of garlic flavor, and then that Parmesan cheese is nice and sharp and adds a lot of personality to the flavor. Mm, I'm a big fan. I've been told that no matter how delicious this is, there's one more component that I can be adding and that I should be adding. This right here is known as pivote. This is like a Chilean salsa. I'm gonna put that inside. Oh, let's go for it. For a moment, my brain said that's too much. Absolutely not. It's fresh, aromatic, acidy, and hot. Whew. It really cuts through the rich flavors of the empanada. That is a good way to start the day. This is today's most affordable location by far. But by the end of today, we'll be trying a seafood that costs over $100. But first, a much more medium-priced location, serving up two unusual Chilean seafood dishes. First, one of the longest species of eel in the world, and the infamous Chilean abalone. We have come to our second location, and this place is wild. It's called Ocean Pacific's Restaurant, and it is huge, and they have some very unique food here. This is a family restaurant with a striking atmosphere inspired by the sea and navigation. You may notice as we walk around that they fully commit to that theme. It doesn't get more nautical than here unless you are actually on a ship. Beyond on that, it is vast. They have everything. Aside from dining areas in the kitchen, they also have a pool where the live fish are. Right now, we're about to head to the pool and they've given me what looks like a Halloween costume. Today, I'm gonna be the gold guard. Now, this is a suit that we have to put on before we go to the pool. It's a lot of radiation in there. That's not true either. All right, let's get dressed. Let's go look at some fish. So right here we have the pool. Now I get it, I thought it was gonna be a pond or something. It's not really an aquarium, I guess it is a pool. That's right Peter. There. Take a look, they have a spiny lobster that they've named. Hopefully just Peter gets his hands in. Oh, his name is Peter, not the lobster. It looks like we stumbled upon some giant tuna steaks being prepared right here, sliced one by one. These look incredible. So right here we're gonna see the eel that we're gonna be trying later today. Let's see it, Pedro. Oh, wow. This is a big conger eel. The giant Chilean conger eel can grow up to six feet in length and weigh over 80 pounds. And their lifespan is nuts, with some of them living over 30 years. Soon, 
Ursula's henchmen here will be chopped up and cooked inside a Chilean dish known as fisherman stew. But first, an appetizer, the Chilean abalone. And in Chile, they do abalone unlike anywhere else. There we go. This is the Chilean abalone. You won't find this anywhere in the world. It does look quite different from some of the other abalones I've seen. It's got a hard protective part. I think they call that the heel. The other day, we went to a big fish market. Most of the fish markets are seafood markets in Asia. You'll see abalone, but they will be alive and they'll have the shell intact. But at that market, they had already kind of scooped them all out of the shell. Why is that? This product, given the fact that it's exclusively here, it's heavily regulated. So we're forced into another kind of processing. Simply put, because of strict Chilean regulations, these abalone must be cooked at a special facility before ever arriving at the restaurant. So this one here can't even be eaten here. This is essentially a pet. This is her pet. Oh, that's interesting. So how do you make a dish from a seafood that's already been boiled? Well, let's find out. Start by cutting the already cooked abalone into slices. To create the foundation for the abalone, a delightful mixture of mayo and diced potato cubes are molded into a circle. The final step, plating. The abalone is elegantly positioned atop the base. Then more of Chile's favorite condiment, mayonnaise. A sprinkling of beet slices, beet sauce for a little bit of color, and a drizzle of olive oil to seal the deal. The abalone here is actually a little bit more expensive, and this is what we're gonna be starting with. I wanna have just the pure abalone. Now that is a big, cold, thick, dense piece of seafood right there. Cheers. Why does it taste like that? But it's hard to pin down exactly how to describe this flavor. In the meantime, I'm gonna pin down some of this potato and mayonnaise mixture. Mm. Oh, it's a Chilean potato salad with micro cubed potatoes. It's delicious. Also, I need to try some of this pink stuff. Mm. Oh, it tastes kind of like a pickled beet. I like it. Okay, from here, I wanna grab another thick slice of this abalone and just apply directly some of this mayonnaise on top. And that is the perfect bite. Cheers. very rich, creamy. The abalone has a cold, dense texture to it, and it tastes a little bit like sausages. What does this taste like to you? Oh, maybe that, oh, yeah, you're right. It tastes a lot like cooked tuna, or even slightly like the essence of a canned tuna, which makes sense then why it would taste so good with mayo. I've never had abalone that tastes anything like this. It is a completely unique and different type of flavor. Now we're heading back to the kitchen to see how they make that fisherman stew chock full of conger eel. So right here we have our core ingredients, potatoes. This is a mixture of carrots, onions, bell peppers, and tomato. And then right here we have a fish stock made from that conger eel. All right, guys, it's a uh, eel stock. Our chef is here, he's about to take it away. Boom, this whole mixture goes inside of our clay pot and then in with that fish stock right here. This is all of our flavor already. Hit that clay pot with a little bit of potato. Right here we have the eel chef. She's carefully just taking off the pieces of meat. It's just pure protein, no bones. A quick handoff to this chef and then that goes deep into our clay pot. It actually, it looks so much like kimchi jjigae, but I'm guessing it will taste nothing like that. This just needs about seven to 10 minutes to cook all the way through. Then they're gonna bring it to our table. I wanna say a huge Thank you to Roberto for preparing our food today. Sir, gracias. Yeah. Mm. I love the amount of cooking that goes on here in these stone bowls because your food just stays hot forever. I'm gonna start by sampling a little bit of this broth. Mm. Mm. It tastes like a combination of a delicious vegetable stock and seafood stock. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's thick, it's heartwarming, it's super delicious. This is a big part of that eel. When most Americans hear eel, they think, eel, gross, no thanks. But in fact, eel's quite delicious and it's eaten all over the world in many different manifestations. Shut the robot up. <laughs> it's a loud robot serving people behind me. Oh, there it is. All right, let's try this conger eel. I gotta say, I'm not a huge fish guy in general, but this is probably my new favorite fish. It just has a lot of body, it's got a great bite to it, but it's not too flaky, it's not mushy whatsoever. Mm, clean, delicious. Beyond that, when you come to this restaurant, it's more than just a dining experience. It's like being immersed in a different world. It's like getting to eat at a museum, which I have done, but then I was escorted out. So that is our second location and our middle is price. But from here, we're going to the most expensive seafood of the day, and we're trying a sea creature I've never had before. It is the king crab of the south. Let's go check it out. 
we have come to our third and final location here. Everything before this moment has been filler because all I really wanted to do in Chile is to experience the king crab. The king crab, it's available in many different places. Even at the market this morning, you can get it there. But we've come here to Aquí Está Coco. This is a high-end, beautiful restaurant, also with a nautical theme, but not so violent. <laughs> This is a more laid-back nautical theme. But first, let's talk about that Chilean king crab. This crab is known for its attractive appearance with snow-white meat, a bright red shell, and a scarlet red membrane. It's praised for its delicate and sweet flavor. In a moment, we're gonna head into the kitchen and check out the biggest crab they have. But first, let's talk to Francisca. Um, I have so many questions. First of all, what is so special about this king crab? You will have to try that. I am not going to say too much, but for me, it's the freshness of the meat. And you will see also the meat is very white and smooth in your mouth. And it's very delicate in flavor. This being the most expensive seafood we will try yeah. today. Part of what dictates the price is how big the king crab gets. What is the biggest king crab you think you might have today? It's around two kilos. And it's good to share with your family, friends, Sadly, none of my family or friends are here today. <laughs> right here, this is our king crab coming in at 1.8 kilograms. I noticed a couple of differences from the Alaskan king crab. In general, it seems slightly more petite. This is more of like a runway model type of crab. Also super spiky. These could be used for giving old fashioned tattoos. Now keep in mind, this has already been par cooked and they're gonna steam it the rest of the way now. All right, we have our pot right here. The crab is going now descending into the hot steaming pot of water. And we'll say hello to that guy soon. Let's talk about the preparation. In the US, we like it hot, but if you go somewhere like Vietnam, they have it steamed, but then maybe they'll put like salted egg sauce on it. Then meanwhile, you go to Spain and maybe it's just completely chilled. So what's the most popular for Chilean people? Cold but warm at the same time. So what, what do I mean? It's like you receive the king crab, it's a little warm, but you put lemon and maybe some mayonnaise in the side and no other sauce. I love mayonnaise and most of my food tour in Santiago has truly been a mayonnaise tour. Yeah, see? Why do they like mayonnaise so much here? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Today I'm getting the hot king crab. I'm about to head to the kitchen and see how they prepare it. 15 minutes has passed, so we're headed back into the kitchen to take this crab out of the pot. Whoosh. Hey, little guy. From here, he grabs it and he puts it on the ice. Oh no, some appendages fell off. So they have a special way of taking it apart. They don't just hand you a whole crab on your table. We're gonna see exactly how the processing works now. Right here, we got Gatti. Step one, Gatti's gonna take all these legs off at once. This crab is now an amputee. Oh, he rips his skull off. So heavy metal. Boom, head goes on the side. And now he's taking it leg by leg and slitting each leg open. Right here, we're getting our first look at that beautiful meat on the inside, reddish orange. It looks absolutely stunning. And that gets set on top of the lettuce here. So right now, all this delicious hip meat is being quickly removed and put inside the cranium of this crab. Even the little pinky toe is of the crab. All of that meat is getting put inside of the head right here. Alas, it is time to crown our crab platter with a head full of crab meat. It looks stunning. All right, folks, we have our final meal right here. For this platter, and all you see is $163. Certainly not cheap, but I do think it's a good value for all that you're getting here. As far as presentation goes, I think it's beautiful. Just the head is so completely full of meat. And then they've just got big old thighs. This is brutal body armor. You could really hurt yourself on this. I'm gonna open her up. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh God, why is nothing going as planned on this show? All right, and you can see those fatty bits on the inside. It's cooled down quite a bit, but it looks delicious. It smells delicious. Let's go for it. Mm. Oh yeah, that's way better than the mock crab I grew up with from the grocery store. It is a more gentle flavor. It's sweet, it's very soft, it's tender. It's real nice. So they have different things that you can dip this into, starting with melted butter and garlic. Oh God, get it deep in there. Oh my gosh, it's just dripping garlic buttery goodness. Cheers. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. It's so rich, it's delicious, it's garlicky. This is pure mouth pleasure right here. Give the wife a little bit of a bite. We tried the garlic butter, we know that's delicious already. But what about having crab with mayonnaise? We are in Santiago after all, and this is the national condiment. I assume, do countries have national condiments? See, in Vietnam it'd be fish sauce. What would it be in Minnesota? Ranch, it would be ranch. We're gonna take some of the mayo, and for many of you watching, this is gonna be sacrilegious, but we're gonna make a meat salad from crab and mayo. I'm getting more mayo. Oh, yes. There are no rules, guys. You can do whatever you want. I've been told to also put some of the citrus on here. We have some limon. This is the ultimate crab salad. Cheers. The 
mayonnaise offers a creamy binding element, tying it all together. There's a little bit of fresh sourness coming from the citrus here. There's some seeds offering some choking hazards. And they even offered me this. I believe they called it American sauce at first. It is ketchup and mayo. That's right, I'm putting a little bit of ketchup on my $163 King Crab. Cheers. I did ruin it though, sorry. I actually ruined it. Overall, this meal was incredible. She said this is for three to four people, but for someone like me, this is uh, for one and a half people. Luckily, my wife is a half a person. The next step is to step outside and tell you which food today gave me the most bang for my buck. Boom, guys, that is the end of the video. Today we went to three different locations and paid three different amounts of money for three different types of seafood. The question is, which seafood gave me the most bang for my buck? Are you ready for my answer? Oh, it's a tough one. The most bang for my buck, it came from shrimp empanadas. Now, I'm not saying the shrimp empanadas were necessarily better than the king crab, but honestly, they give it a run for its money. It was the kind of empanada that you have to eat within five minutes. It was this sweet zone where when you ripped it open, you saw big, beautiful, beautiful juicy shrimp and just gorgeously gooey melted cheese. I loved it. This marks the end of our series here in Santiago. We spent four fun food filled days scoping out the whole city, trying every type of food you can imagine. I hope you enjoyed this tour and if you didn't see all of it, go watch it again, please for the ad revenue. Before we go, I have to say a huge thank you to Locify. Locify offers customized private walking tours led by over 5,000 passionate locals in more than 300 cities around the world. If you're looking to have an authentic approach to tours, like a friend showing you around a new city, going to non-touristic types of places, then go check out the link downstairs in the description, click on the Locify link, and then go make an appointment, schedule a tour with Locify. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Happy. Oh, I ate so much seafood today. I got gout. I'm for sure gonna have a gout attack in the morning. That's all right. I'm gonna go to the gout pharmacy store. Cure my gout in the black market. If you love Indian food, then you're gonna love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.